powerful prophetic vision telecast amen today we got some special guests in here to elaborate more on i've been teaching on the feast of passover and the seven feast of the lord and the feast of unleavened bread so i had to get some more experts in here to elaborate and to add on to piggyback on what god had gave me amen because i tell you all the time i don't know everything amen but as we continue to join in unity love truth and revelation as we enter into this next season amen we can go high as we join our heads together with the same heart the same spirit and the same faith amen i got today in the studio bishop a great friend of mine bishop d bear amen Amen. Powerful man Amen. of God, the yes, billionaire sir. club man. You know what I'm saying? I'm yes, talking about, sir. boy, you talking about if God was fly, this cat right here, my God. If you want to see the Holy Ghost fly, this is Bishop D. Bear, amen. amen. And then we got the prophet in from Illinois, amen. Prophet William D. Determined Evans, amen. My God. Glory to God. He just gave us a powerful word elaborating on the feast of the Lord, amen. The Christ is Christ is our Passover. We always say Jesus was our Passover, but he just brought it to light that Christ is our Passover through the revelation and the truth and the biblical foundation of the word, amen. amen. And so I just want to let these guys, amen. I'm going to let you guys, D Bishop D. Bear, what is the Lord saying in this season, man? Well, I want to say this before I take out any time. I just want to commend you you God. for allowing God to use you in a mighty way I mean if this is not a leap of faith yes sir at his finest yes where a man took nothing and made something my God I tell you all of my friends the BCOF billionaire circle of friends that are looking at this by way of Ustream by way of broadcast we're also going to be Aaron live on uh, 1600 AM. So I want you to tune into this uh, studio live recording because we're going to view this same one yeah. on 1600. I'm telling you, God is doing something powerful with Prophet Gillespie Studio, Now Faith Studios for all of the pastors that God is raising up in this city, that God is raising up all over this world, the generals that God is using. I want you to connect with this powerful man of God because when you do, God will bless you in return. So I just wanted to commend you, Prophet, for all of the work. Some people don't even have a vision for their own self. My God. Let's know their community and the whole universe. My God. I see this place going universal. My God. Yes. I see the new Creflo Dollars, the Leroy Thompsons, the Kenneth Copelands, the Benny Hens being aired right here in Now Faith Studios. I'm telling you, we need to connect. Oh, Rabasha, I feel the anointing already. We need to connect. We need to come together as generals into the faith and the unity of faith until we edify the body of Christ and I think that's what this great general is doing now bringing all of us all of us together to share the different truths and the different powerful specific anointings that God has placed on each and every one of us now I want to leave you with this because it's really not my time I'll be back next week so I my want God. you to plug into the power source of now faith studios and tune into what I'm going to have to share on April the 7th which is our spiritual father the chief apostles night Yes. I want to invite everybody to come out and share with us. Invite Lottie Dottie and everybody to come out and share <laughs> yeah. with us because I'm telling you, it's going to be a billionaire affair. My God. And I'm telling you, the billionaire mentality is that I can do all things through Christ, the mindset of God that releases the power of God. Yeah. And so this is what we're doing. And I just wanted to thank you again, Prophet Gillespie, and the powerful movement that God is doing in your life and what God is doing in your life, prophet. Amen. I commend you as well, man of God. This is just awesome. This is this is the beginning of greatness. My God. And uh, every every step of faith that you take, God has a seed to work with. My God. I was taught this years ago by my chief apostle that whatever you do first always determines what God is going to do next. My God. And uh, I tell you prophetically tonight. That I hear the Spirit of God saying, because you jumped out on faith, because you did it with what you had. My God. You were kind of like the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 who had lost all of her resources. Her husband had died. She didn't have nothing really to work with. My God. The prophet showed up and the prophet said, look, now, I understand your dilemma. What do you have in your house? Man of God, I hear God saying, because you took the leap of faith and utilized what you had in your house. Oh, Rabbi. Oh, Baba. 
that God is getting ready to send some folks. My God. Brother, I see a Pharaoh. My God. I, oh, God, I see a Pharaoh that's getting ready to finance your dream. This is just the beginning. I see real TV cameras. Amen. Not that these ain't real. But see, you, you've already did what God requires. The Bible says if the first fruit be holy, meaning the first thing you do, if the first thing is right, everything else got to line up with it. Man of God, I tell you on your way. And I am so blessed and so honored and so privileged to be a part of this, to be in your studio. And I just commend you. Man of God, look here, man. I receive it. I know that's God. You yes, know what I'm saying? When God gave us this vision of uh, pro prophetic vision TV, yes. it was strictly about the prophet. Yes. And the prophetic. Amen. My God. The prophetic has been been made clouded, has been persecuted in the church. Yes. Amen. And so, you know, we, you know, in some places you go, you can't even say you're a prophet because, yes, they, because of the false prophet. Amen? Yes, sir. Wow. And so something. we know that the Trinity of God is the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But the trinity of the devil is the Satan, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. Antichrist. Now you wow. something now. So, so the prophetic has been, you know, it's it's been attacked. Amen. It's been attacked. And we got a lot of false gangsayers and you yes, know, we do. people understand about about the uh, the psychics and you know the, yes. the gift. By, the Bible says the gift come without repentance. Yes. Sir. So we got folks that's got the gift, but they ain't got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wow. You talking and so good? God huh? has called and commissioned me to to join with other powerful men of God like yourself from the backside of the mountain. I come to tell y'all, it's y'all time, man. My I, God. Receive I receive that. that. It, it's I your time, man. I'm that. telling you, let me tell you something. We've been in the line for a long time, but folks have jumped out the line. Some folks, done, they didn't persecute themselves. Some folks yes. done, done involved in some, some bondage. Come you on. see what I'm saying? Some folks done got scared and been in line all the time and got scared, but the whole time the line got shorter. Man, I, want, I, I want to tell the audience that is viewing this right now, the prophet just released a powerful nugget, a powerful word. He said, if you're viewing this right now, not only is it our season, but it's your season. Audible kosha. If you're right there in your car, if you're right there in your house, I don't care where you are right now. I dare you to shout it out right now. It's my season. It's my season. It's my season. My God, that is so powerful. And but I, I I want I want to get back to Christ as my pastor. Okay. All right. I, Hallelujah. My God, I know y'all obey we here. God, man, but I want to get back, man, because see, I'm gonna tell you, this teaching of the feast of the Lord has been attacked. Yes, sir. Since I've been teaching this teaching, I've heard that's the Old Testament. Okay. I've heard that's for the Jews. Okay. I've heard that that stuff don't that stuff ain't for us. Okay. But clearly in the text it says keep these feasts forever. Wow. All right. It even said, teach it to your sons. When, you, when your children ask, you tell them that this is when the pe my people got delivered out of Egypt. Yes, sir. Prophet, can you read that word? I, I want the audience. The Bible says that Jesus took them to where it was written. You just made a powerful statement here that the Bible says we are to keep these feasts, yes. which are holy feasts. Mm, holy convocation. All right now. These are actual holy days, not holidays, mm. but holy days. And I want you to read this. What text are we in? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. It says, and the Lord spake verse, unto what verse? Verse, verse number one through, one through about four. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them wow. concerning the feast. See, I, I taught and the chief apostle teaches this and y'all teaches this, that this word feast in the Hebrew means appointed time, exact time. Wow. Or appointed season. Come on now. You saying something. But now in, in English, we think that feast is all about eating. Wow. So he said, he said, look, go holler at Moses. Have him to holler at the children of Israel concerning my appointed time. My wow. appointed time. This is my your appointed, appointed time. Time. If you're viewing this right now, I'm telling you that something is about My to God. take over your life like a tsunami. My I'm God. telling you the blessings are about to take you all oh, the shot. Oh, take My over. God. The plowman is about to overtake the reaper. All you got to do is connect to this power source right now. Yes. I'm telling you the anointing is in this studio. It's in this My studio. God. It's God. in here right now. I feel it right now. It's in here right now. And just like the man of God said, this is your time. This is your season. We are celebrating Passover. This is the season, the appointed time yes. by the most high God for stuff to pass by you. My God. Can you shout amen? Amen. amen. Prophet, you was dealing with uh, 
Christ as our Passover. Yes, I will. I want you to elaborate a little bit on Christ, our Passover, because I want the audience to really get a true understanding of what Christ is. Because we know, me and Prophet Gillespie understand that Christ is not the last name of Jesus, yes. right. but it's the mindset of God that releases the power of God. Okay. Can you explain to us and the audience exactly how Christ is correlated to Passover? All right. I'm going to take you to the word of God because the Bible says that God always confirms his word right. with a sign following. Amen. And uh, I want to begin in First Corinthians chapter five. Yeah. Now, in verse number six, the Bible talks about your glory and is not good. Mm. So I want to start there. Wow. Know you not that a little leaven. Yeah. See, a little bit of error My God. can mess up everything. My mm. God. One man. And, and I got news for you. Most people. When we talk about Passover and just like Prophet Gillespie said, folk want to say that's Old Testament. Well, the prophet is in the house. Wow. And I got some scripture to back up the Old Testament what he, relative to what he was saying. But watch With this the New now. Testament. With the New Testament. But watch this now. Yes. Notice what the text says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 6. Your glory is not good. Mm -hmm. Paul said, this ain't good now. <laughs> You need to know that a little leaven, leaven it the whole lump. Now, verse 7 is where we want to park at. Right. He says, now you need to purge out the whole leaven. Uh -huh. All right, watch this now. That you may be a new lump as you are unleavened for even Christ. Christ. Right. There it is. Not there Jesus is. now. There it is. But Christ. And I don't mean to upset you. There it is. But I'm showing you what the word says. Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us now watch this let me just let me give it to you like this here when we talk about christ christ is not jesus's last name christ is the mind that jesus used that releases the power and the anointing of god this is why paul in turn turns around in one of his epistles and says through christ not jesus but through christ i can do all things in other words this mind this Passover, the Christ, the Passover, can cause you to make stuff pass you by. At the same time, it can cause stuff to come into your life. My God. Now, here is what's powerful about the Christ and understanding of the Christ mind and Christ being this, this Passover that, that we celebrate. For most people, the Bible talks about it as the Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. In other words... In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 16, the Bible says, but we have the mind of Christ. So this mind is in everybody. This mind was in you be, when, before you got here. Right, Watch right. this. Because it is actually the consciousness of God that's in every human being. The Bible says wow. that God ruach, blew into man and man became. Well, what did God blow into man? He blew his breath into man, his wind. And we know that wind and breath, ether, spirit, it's consciousness. Oh God. So God blew himself into man. That's in every human being, even the folks that you don't like, the folks that you mm. think they're stroking, drinking, smoking, and horny, doing all that stuff. Listen, they still got it in them. It may not be activated. It may not be operative, but I got good news for you. It's in them. God said, every soul is mine. Now, that's what he said. Yeah. So contrary to popular belief, why we don't understand that we are connected to everybody. I'm saying something now. That God is really trying to get us to understand that he's not trying to get us to focus our, our attention on, per se, flesh. But he's trying to get us to focus on spirit. My God. Because that spirit is his consciousness. It is the mind of God that releases the power of God. Now, Jesus said it himself in Luke 4 and 18, prophet, right. bishop. He says, the spirit or the mind or the consciousness of God is the upon body. me and he, mm -hmm. oh God. That, that power, that mind has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. In other words, what Jesus was saying, if you ain't got this mind, you ain't got no business preaching. My God. Because you ain't going to be effective. My God. This mind releases a certain type of power into the ethers, into the, the, the realm right. of what Lynn McTaggart calls the field. This mind is connected to that ether. Mm. Let me give you a case in point. Watch this. 
I always hit them like this with my vitamin on the page. Let's pause for the cause. Mm -hmm. Jesus needed some transportation. Right. The Bible said he sent his disciples to a city and said, look, now you're going to find a coat tied. Ain't nobody ever rode this. When you get down there, let the person at the car lot know that I have need of it. Now, there's nowhere in the text that states that Jesus ever had contact with the man nor a conversation. Well, what are you saying, prophet? I'm saying to you that Jesus was so sharp and so gifted and anointed with this mind and the utilization of this mind that he was able to speak to a man's mind miles away from him to get exactly what he wanted. So, now, when we graduate, I'm, I'm going to give it to okay. you, Bishop. When we graduate from stinking thinking, Mm. And we allow the Christ in us to really be resurrected because that's what this day is really all about. It's about the Christ in you being resurrected. Wow. Everything in you dead being resurrected will cause you to operate on a conscious level that's beyond human, that's beyond your wildest expectation. My God. So in other words, prophet, you're telling us that Christ is actually the power of God. Christ is actually the power of God. And this power of God is released through the mind of God or the wisdom of God. The mind of God, in addition to that, it bursts the wisdom of God. Because now, the application is what bursts the wisdom. That is so powerful because you're telling me lack, shortage, and insufficiency can pass over my life when I use this Christ mind. That's what I'm my telling God, you. My God. And most people, Bishop, the, the reason why a lot of people are actually operating in what we would call bondage, because if you are facing lack, shortage, and insufficiency, that's a form of bondage. You are kind of like the children of Israel who were still in Egypt under Pharaoh's uh, harsh uh, 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 hand or bondage. Now watch this. It ain't good enough to just know it. Right. You have to understand it. Right. The Bible says get knowledge and get wisdom. But with all of you getting, get an understanding. Wow. There are people who know Christ. Watch this. And know about the Christ. But they don't understand how to use that power. See, for a long time, we've been thinking in this dimension that we are actually dealing with God directly. Well, if we was dealing with God directly, there wouldn't be no lack. There wouldn't be no shortage. There wouldn't wow. be no insufficiency. Because God said in 3 John so 1 and 2, I would that you prosper, be in health even as your soul prosper. Now watch this. He mentions the word soul because your soul is your thinking. Well, it encompasses your ability to think, your ability to make decisions, and your ability to emotionalize feelings. Now watch this. Anytime you lose control of your own thoughts, in other words, when you don't have controlled thinking, when you are not able to make decisions based on the leading of the Spirit of God, yeah. in other words, you're motivated by your flesh, and then when you can't emotionalize your own feelings, then you have actually lost your soul. Now, the church taught us you lose your soul when you go to hell. That's a whole nother broadcast, but watch this. You lose your soul when you can't think for yourself and somebody else is thinking for you. When you can't make decisions for yourself and somebody else have to make decisions for you and you can't even control your own feelings. In other words, you wear your feelings and your emotions on your shoulders. People know how to push certain buttons and make you react a certain way because they know that they are in control or have more control over you than you do over yourself. That's powerful. Now, when a person is operating in the Christ mind, and they understand that this is actually the power of God via what God released into this dimension so that man can utilize to get anything he wants. Because remember now, the Bible says God himself said, I won't withhold no good thing from you. Now, something may be good for you, but it may not be good for me. Right. But because it's good for you and you want it, that power can make it happen. I'm talking good. In addition to that, I know it hurts people when you say prophetically that we are not directly dealing with God, but we are dealing with him indirectly. And what we are actually dealing with is the power that he created. It's a little difficult because the church has really kind of hoodwinked us. They've bamboozled. They've lied to us and they've taught us a lot of untruths that sound true. But remember now, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. See, sometimes stuff smell like God. It look like God. It feel like God. But yet and still, baby, that don't mean it's God. I'm telling you prophetically tonight that this power, the Christ, the anointing that releases this power via this dimension is what we are dealing with. And this power is actually a mirror of the person 
who uses that power. This is how people are cursed and other folks are blessed. Now, this is going to hurt a lot of church folk, but it's going to help you at the same time. It's kind of like when we was in school and, you know, they would tell you this might hurt a little bit, but I got to give you this shot because it's good for you. I'm right. going to give you a shot. Watch this. It's sad but true that there are people who don't belong to your local church who are using this power. They riding better. They living better. They got more resources. But we've been dancing and shouting and speaking in tongues and talking about we're going to get it when we get out of here, and we still ain't got it. And I submit to you, I wouldn't need no Bentley in heaven because there ain't going to be no gas stations up there. And then in addition to that, heaven is really in your mind. I can't hear nobody. It's a mindset. So watch this now. What are you saying, prophet? I'm saying when you, when you get a basic understanding of the Christ, that's when you can utilize it and it becomes effective in your life. It ain't good enough to just know some stuff. It's going to take more than just knowledge because for the last, what, 2,000 years, it seemed like the church been eating off the tree of knowledge and we still ain't learned nothing yet. Mm. Wow. Ever learning but never coming into the experience or the truth of what's being said. Now, you said something that I want to get clear with the audience because you made a powerful statement as well that Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Yes. But it's the power of God that's released through the wisdom or the mind of God. Now, I want to take you to a scripture to validate that, that statement found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 24. Because there's going to be a lot of contradictory sayings about this revelation about who Christ is. Christ was not the last name of Jesus, but it was what Jesus used to release the power that he needed to get him or anybody else out of the dilemma that they were in. Right. First Corinthians chapter one, verse number 24. If you have your Bibles and you're following along with us, I want you to see this. It says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks. He said, this does not matter. This, it doesn't matter what nationality you come from. Right. Oh, amen. What ethnic group you come from. You're saying something now. He says, this truth will stand regardless. Christ. I want everybody in the audience to shout Christ. Christ. The power of God and the wisdom of God. There it is right there. There it is right there. That's it. Right That's exactly he what explained I was what Christ was. Christ is the power of God that's released through the wisdom or the mind of God. Right. Yes. It's not the last name of Jesus. And when you get this kind of understanding, what understanding is that? The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ. Right. Yes. The Christ mind says, I can instead of I can't. When you understand that you have the power within to bring something from nothing. My God. Now you're operating in the Christ mind. That's what our job as prophets in this dispensation of time is to reveal to the people. That Jesus did not come to reveal God to man. Right. But he came to reveal God in man. There you because is. greater is he that is in me than anything that I face in the world. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. My Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. So, so basically what you're saying, Bishop, is a lot of saints got Jesus. They got Jesus. They got Jesus. They got it. But they ain't got Christ. But they ain't got the wow. Christ. Wow. You didn't say it now in a nutshell. It. That's it. That's that's the. We don't that, have to go any farther. That's that's it. That's, 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 it. It. that's it. it. The prophet has said it in a nutshell. The prophet has spoken. And we can close this 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 broadcast right now because I believe that everybody that's listening right now, and even if you tuned in to Ustream or you popped it up on Facebook, or if you're listening to 1600 AM, I want you to know you're not listening by happen chance, but this is a prophetic divine connection. And everybody that connects with this ministry, Now Faith Studios, I don't care how small you think you are. I don't care how big you think you are. The Bible says when you give water to a prophet, in other words, when you support what he does, you will get a prophet's reward. Prophet, I want you to know that even though you're blessing us, it's more of a blessing to bless you. Yes, it is. Because when we bless you, the Bible says that God will give us a 
prophet's reward. Yes. Now, what's a prophet's reward? I'm going to tell you what a prophet's reward is. When Elijah went to the widow woman, he told her, sow into me first. Mm. And when you sow into me, you will have as much as you need as long as the famine exists. I want to tell the audience right now, if you're looking for a fertile ground to sow into, sow into Now Faith Studios because God is saying in this season, if you sow into the prophet's vision, I'm going to make sure that you have an endless life. In other words, life meaning the highest quality of existence. Yes, yes. Your highest quality of existence will be endless. My God. Just like the widow woman. My God. That's powerful. Prophet Evans. Yes, sir, man of God. There are some young prophets on the other side of that camera. Yes, sir. They kind of got an understanding of the prophetic. Yes, sir. But they really don't. Yes, sir. There's some more prophets on the other side of that camera. They think they're walking under their daddy's anointing. Yes. And they don't understand that suffering comes with this thing. Yes. Minister to the young prophets around the world. We're, we're broadcasting live to 127 countries from Trinidad to Africa. Oh, Rabbi. To China. We're broadcasting live right now to Beirut. Hallelujah. Iraq. My God. My God. I speak to all dry bones. Oh, cool, bo, 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 cool, gender, shop. Color, I speak race, to lack. Oh, yes. cool, bo, bo, cool, shop. I want to begin by saying to all of the young prophets that are listening, yeah. just like Prophet Gillespie said, some of us, we, we think that we can just piggyback on 10 years ago's anointing, your daddy's anointing, your pastor's anointing. But let me just say this to encourage you. God has called you for a time such as this. And there is no need to be fearful. There was no need to put yourself in a position where you feel like that you are inferior to anybody nor superior. Hallelujah. But I want to say this to encourage you that every prophet has to go through four stages. My God. And I'm talking to somebody right now that needs to hear this word. Some young prophet. Yeah. You in a situation right now where you at Gilgal when the prophet Elijah was beginning to prepare his young son, a younger prophet, Elijah. He told him, he said, look, now I, I'm eventually I'm going to get out of here. He says, but there's a few stages I got to go through and you're going to have to be tested. He said, I'm going to Gilgal. I need you to stay here. And he said, as long as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I ain't going to stay. I'm going wherever you go. So he leaves Gilgal and he goes to Bethel. Mm. He says the same thing when he gets to Bethel. He says, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Why don't you stay here in Bethel? And he says, as your soul live it and as the Lord live it. I'm not going to stay here. I'm following you. Then he goes to Jericho. Same thing happens in Jericho. This prophet runs into 50 of the other a uh, little bit more mature prophets. And they tell him, do you not know that your prophet is going to be taken from you? Mm. And so they say, yeah. He says, I know it, but hold your peace. And so the last stage he gets to is, is Jordan. But here's what I want to say to you young prophets. Each one of those stages means something prophetically. And somebody that I'm talking to right now is at the stage of Gilgal. Gilgal represents the place of circumcision. You're in a place right now where your man of God, the person that's watching over you, your senior prophet, is cutting on your flesh. He, he has to. It's his assignment at Gilgal to circumcise you, to cut the offense out of your life that's stopping the progress in your life. My God. And then some of you are at Bethel. You're at that state where you are having dreams and visions because Bethel represents the place of dreams and visions. You've already allowed your man of God to cut the offense out. But now you are at Bethel and you are wondering why you are having dreams and you are wondering why you are having visions. And it's simply because God is telling you that he's elevating you to the next level. He's showing you things that you don't even understand. But I submit to you as a prophet, you need to write it down. Oh, yeah. The Bible says write the vision, make write it plain. The and then you share that with your man of God. Don't think because it's, it's foreign or, or it seems silly that you should keep it to yourself. My God, you but share that. And then one of you or somebody that I'm talking to is at Jericho. You are at that stage. And Jericho represents the place of exploits or miracles. The Bible says that when the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho that they came down. In other words, this is the place where your faith had to be tested. It seems like all hell has broke loose in your life. 
But I got to I got to tell you this because I love you. A faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Wow. And so you are in a place right now where your faith is being tested. It's being challenged. My little boy. Oh, God. And God is telling you, don't throw in the towel. Go through this transition. Go through this season. And then last but not least, Jordan. That is the place where miracles manifest. The Bible says that Elijah smote the waters with his prophet's mantle. And he's seen manifestation. Some of you act like you are scared right now to believe God, to piggyback and do greater things than the man of God that assigned you to the prophetic to do. What are you saying, man of God? In this season, you need to understand that there is a double portion on your life right now. Yeah. Don't feel bad because God is doing some stuff in your life that he didn't do in your prophet's life, your senior prophet. Yeah. The Bible records 14 miracles, watch this, that Elijah performed. But it records 28 that his predecessor Elijah did. Meaning that you are supposed to do greater than your father. My that God. is the transfer of the anointing. Don't my feel God. bad, beloved. And that's what God has given me for him, prophet. My God, my God, you said something so powerful, man. Look here, man. Look, look. Study to show yourself approved. Yes. Okay? The prophetic might not be prophetic where you at, but that don't mean you're not prophetic. Yes. Amen? The senior, pro the senior prophets in the house tonight spoke rhema word. Yes, thank you. Holy Lord. Ghost fear word. This ain't no script. This is all from the hill. Yes. And so I pray that something was said tonight. Prophet.